Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah. Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala khatmi anbiya. Ve seyyidu musallin nebina ve habibina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Esselamu aleykum ve rahmetullah ve barakatuh. And uh, welcome to this special presentation by the Land Post Education Initiative. Uh, a conversation about the recent Roe versus Wade uh, abortion uh, decision by the U.S. Supreme Court uh, in, in an attempt to deal with the topic from an Islamic perspective. Um, and alhamdulillah, today uh, we will be um, sharing uh, this particular panel uh, and uh, having discussion with an extremely important uh, member of our community, our brother Ismail Royer. Uh, and so, inshallah, he, inshallah, he's on his way. Uh, hopefully, he'll be with us very soon. Um, but while we wait for him, I just wanted to read just a little bit uh, of his bio. Um, Ismail Royer serves as director of the Islam and Religious Freedom Action Team for the Religious Freedom Institute. Uh, he, uh, since converting to Islam in 1992, he has studied religious sciences with traditional Islamic scholars and spent over a decade working at nonprofit Islamic organizations. Um, uh, Ismail is um, very active uh, with the conservative community and many organizations related to uh, litigation with the Supreme Court. Uh, he has written multiple articles and worked in many nonprofit non organizations, and many of them are Muslim nonprofit organizations. Uh, his writings appear in publications such as the Washington Post, First Things, uh, the Journal of Religion and Society, Public Discourse, Detroit Free Press, uh, etc. And he's also co-authored an article on Islam in Religious Violence Today, Faith and Conflict in the Modern World. Uh, and this was in 2020. He's also the author of the monograph, Pakistan's Blasphemy Law and Non-Muslims. And that itself is published uh, through the Land Post Education Initiative. Um, and um, and uh, that particular publication, uh, you know, uh, is, is also an important publication. And, and I also wanted to add that, uh, said Ismail, that he is uh, a board member uh, of the Land Post Education Initiative as well. Uh, so we really are very proud to have him working with us. Uh, and um, inshallah, so I'm going to bring him in uh, just in a second. And um, so there he is, Brother Ismail. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. How are you today? Is your mic on? Can you hear me? Can't, I can't hear you. It sounds like your mic is not on. Let's see if you're muted. No, you're not muted. <laughs> maybe try to take out the uh, the earphones. Uh, <laughs> take those out, maybe try again. No, I can't hear you at the moment. <laughs> it's just okay, inshallah, we'll work it out. You know, so having some technical difficulties naturally. Uh, hopefully that'll be resolved very soon. Uh, but in the meantime, um, I think um, an important uh, point to make. Yes, yes. Can you I hear, hear me? Hear, okay. Some noise here. Making some noise there, mashallah. Making noise? Uh, Is it making yes, noise? Yes, yes. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. All right, Loud and clear, mashallah. Welcome. Mashallah. Appreciate it. You've been with us today. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I uh, wanted to actually mention a, a few things before we get started today. Because today I wanted sure. to, I want us to, um, I want to, uh, this to be both a conversation and somewhat of an interview at the same time. And um, and I would say that one of uh, one particular goal that I think is important to have when you have these type of conversations is the goal to um, give as much clarity to difficult ideas as possible, try to simplify things. Because um, considering the fact that Muslims um, have transitioned, transitioned quite, quite a bit politically in the United States. We went to being an apolitical uh, community to being pro-political post 9-11. Um, you know, many of us were, uh, I guess you would say somewhat even to the point of being anti-American uh, and not seeing um, um, involvement in the political process to be Islamic and to now many people believing that it's an obligation to not only a vote, uh, but to be part of the system, right? And in the process of that, uh, we have been evolving in many different ways 
And, um, and so we stumbled up, I like to say. We're stumbling up. Uh, and, and of course, this, this particular response, the response to many in our community to the recent overturning of Roe versus Wade uh, is a clear sign of that, you know, that uh, our community still has some maturing to do, some, some um, there's, there's a lot of room for progress. Um, and, and, I, and I would say too, that uh, at least from my vantage point, uh, it seems uh, that quite often we get it wrong because we don't properly uh, apprehend what's really happening. That you know, we don't understand the philosophical underpinnings. We don't understand the way that the system works. We don't understand the the goals uh, of different factions in the community. What their moral philosophy is. Uh, there are many of those things that distort our understanding. You know, and so. Um, so, so the one sense we need to understand that if we don't properly comprehend things on the ground, then we will make an improper judgment about things, right? And then, you know, um, and then, and then, uh, uh, um, uh, and that itself is uh, what leads to the, the greatest level of khilaf, you know. So, at any rate, uh, um, I, I wanted to sort of begin by clearing the air too, because I wanted to talk about the con, you know, the ideas about justice, because this has become a matter which people uh, uh, relate to the, the idea of justice, right? And I think that we can talk about justice, three different definitions of justice that people sort of consider. One, justice as exceeding bounds, right? Uh, Tajawuz al Hajj, right? You know, to, to exceed bounds, right? Or, or the idea of tasarrufi mulk al ghair, that one meddles in someone else's business, someone else's domain. And takes control of their property, and then what was shafi like and then also to put things uh, out of place, you know, or put things in a place where they don't belong, right? You know, and so of course, uh, our factual ass assessments, right? You know, really are extremely important, you know, for our religious assessment, right? You know, so we have to have the facts right before we start to talk about what is the proper religious position to take, right? You know, and so before we start talking about the case and the history and those type of things. I do want to, like I said, clear the air with respect to one particular question that has, has arisen over the past two days, and I've seen it um, on certain uh, timelines, where uh, the issue is raised about women, for instance, participating in this panel. Like just two, we're two men, right? So the question that one may ask is, okay, why do you have the audacity to speak about issues that directly affect women, right? You're a man, right? Do you have the right even to actually speak about uh, abortion, right? So I mean, so you know, how do we, well, I think that's uh, start there and then perhaps we can move on because we give, I think if we give an adequate answer to that question to begin it, that we may even keep it, but keep certain people with us, right? Because some people, they will turn tune out because automatic, okay, don't see any women, you know, and, you know, so what, what uh, is your understanding uh, of Islam, Islam's understanding of this issue with respect to um, men speaking about issues that are particular to women and vice versa? Well, <clears throat> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Um, first of all, I, I just want to say a couple things. One is that I'm um, grateful for you. I think your, your mic went out again. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Ismail, oh, you, you muted yourself. Sorry, you muted yourself. Let me let me try to unmute you. Okay, how, uh, try to speak now. I can't hear you at all. Okay, for some reason. how about hold, now? Hold on a second. You muted yourself again. It's weird. I'm not muting myself. It's like the the computer is like automatically doing it for some reason. I'm okay. Not... I can hear you now. Yeah, I'm having sound issues, so um, I. You know, I hate to do this, but I may, I may have to actually like switch to another computer at, at some point. But what I'm going to do is get that because um, this computer is acting really janky. So, mm -hmm. inshallah, um, what I'll do is I'll set that up so that it's not a, a huge transition just in case I do need to do that. And it will only right. yeah take a few moments, inshallah, if I do have to do that. And a matter of fact, I might just do that anyway at, at a, you know, while you're speaking at, at some pause in the thing, you know, just to avoid pro problems. So, that, you know, the other thing I was going to say was... Um, that I'm absolutely, I, I want to make very clear that anyone who like 
I might be uh, disagreeing with, or like I'm, I, who might be thinking that I'm like talking about them and in and, and, and um, whatever, or if I in fact mention them by name, uh, I want to be clear that I don't mean any like um, uh, 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 real disrespect. And and if I do mean disrespect, because some people should not be respected, <laughs> then I'll I'll make it clear. But ge- but but generally speaking, like the our community, our, you know, our friends and so on, they're not people deserving of disrespect, even though they disagree, because my assumption is, first of all, that people are not neither evil nor stupid. You know what I mean? Every, you know, everyone, my assumption is that they have uh, good intentions and that, uh, you know, and, and, and um, unless they make clear otherwise, you know, just very clear otherwise. And my assumption is that people are intelligent, reasonable people. It's just that, um, you know, not, we, we, ha- we haven't all, uh, uh, had the opportunity to to to, um, uh, to think through many things or whatever, just like I haven't, you know. So uh, I, I've gotten some amazing feedback from many people to like uh, some of the comments I've made on uh, YouTube and Twitter and, and and Facebook, and and have taken a lot of those into account. Have made me think um, through things in different ways, and uh, these are all part important parts of the conversation. So uh, just like, um, by the way, I've had people like attacking me like viciously. I mean, really, really. In in fact, old friends. I mean, I'm I'm talking about decades old friends, um, which I'm very sad about. But I don't. Um, I'm not going to hold that against them because we're all, you know, many of us operating under a lot of emotion and misconception. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, with all that's a water under the bridge, inshallah. But all right, so the, the issue of um, women. So I'm going to read to you um, a sister, Marion Batar, who is um, actually someone. Uh, yeah, just okay. okay I'm going to make this transition here so that we don't have to keep dealing. With okay, it. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, yes. you, if you, if you, if you, I can, I can actually speak a little bit to this okay. point if you like, you know, okay. if, while you, well, while okay. you make your adjustment. Oh, go ahead, please, and then I'll, I'm going to make the adjustment. Uh, might drop out and then come back in. You go ahead and speak, and then I'll, I'll say once I've got this situation under control, inshallah. Okay, you're right. Yes. Okay. Right. So, alhamdulillah, inshallah. It's, it's unfortunately naturally we see that you know we have some technical difficulty. Hopefully, um, we get this worked out very soon. But um, the question that I asked. Uh, Brother Ismail from the beginning was the uh, was why he or myself had the audacity uh, of believe that uh, we have the right to speak about issues that directly affect women, right? Because uh, abortion, um, of course, the way it is often uh, painted is that it is a woman's issue, right? Because it's a woman's body, and this is, of course, the talking point from the left, right? Is that you know it's all about your body, your choice. Uh, and the idea that there's an actual independent life growing inside of the woman, right, is um, it just really a fantasy, right? You know, it just, you know, this is all about women's rights, so bodily autonomy, right? Now, from the Islamic perspective, it doesn't matter um, what sex the individual who is speaking about an issue is, right? You know, if that individual is qualified to speak about the issue. Um, and a woman can speak about men's issues, and if a woman is qualified to speak about them, and a man should be able to speak about women's issues, right? It is only in this new, uh, very warped culture, right, the, that uh, that has been developed, where we start to say that um, we have sort of different um, oppressed groups and uh, default oppressed groups and default oppressor groups, and it, and it, you know, so fundamentally, you know, if a man, of course, is considered to be an oppressor, you know, the general class of men are considered to be patriarchal and evil and patriarch is evil, you know, so we shouldn't have the right to speak to women's issues. Now, the first thing I say about that is, okay, if that were true, then the Prophet Muhammad should have never had the right to have a special day where he spoke to um, to the, the woman of the of the Sahabiyat, right? That he taught them specifically on special days during the week. Um, why didn't he send Aisha Rajal Anha? Why didn't he see his wives to speak to them? You know, so this whole idea that that a man can't have anything to say about women's issues, personal issues, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is, is is really fallacious. In the same way that you know a white man can speak about black issues and a black man can speak about white issues if those individuals are qualified to do so. If they've studied and they've done their research, they should be able to do so. And this is Islam, right? This is the way that it works. You know, this idea that, that, you know, if you belong to one group, you don't have the right to speak about 
uh, the issues that affect another group, you know, or that you can't be a scholar, right, on this issue itself is completely fallacious. And we have to disabuse ourselves of this, this sort of idea from, from the start. Um, and so that just put that out, just throw it out, right? Throw it out the window. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with Islam, right? Yeah. Now, the second issue that question that one might ask is that, well, okay, uh, while, um, while it may be true, right, if somebody accepts this logic that I'm, I at least did the logic, uh, my logic on this, uh, in which I consider to be Islamic logic, uh, then one may say that um, fundamentally, um, it, okay, well, if it is possible for a woman to speak on this issue, why didn't you invite a woman to speak um, about this issue, right? And our response is, and this is not the first time at Lampos we've had this sort of accusation, as, as many of the org other organizations have had this accusation that that they're not, that's not enough woman female involvement, you know? And I say, well, listen, first and foremost, we need to ask the question, you know, are there any women in our community who actually have expertise on Roe versus Wade and they've and actually written things, they have, they, have, they have scholarship on it, or they have enough Islamic uh, uh, knowledge and uh, you know in their background they can to actually um, to actually provide guidance on these type of issues, right? But that's the first thing, you know. Let's say let's say that they, they do exist, that there are those moments, right? They, in our community who exist. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm, like, I'm, I'm still having issues here. It seems like a, a streaming issues. So no, but we can hear um, you. We'll go right ahead. I've got a third. I've got another alternative. I'm going to try, <laughs> inshallah. And okay. let me let me go try that now. Okay? Inshallah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll right. continue. Okay, all right. So, so we, which hopefully we get back to that. You know. So 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 the the so if we do, for instance, if we do have in the community, the point I was making is that if there are in our community, and there are sisters in our community who have such expertise, like for instance, someone like Intisarab, uh, who I would say is completely fully qualified to actually speak both to Roe versus Wade and Islamic law. Right. Yeah. However, um, it's not easy to actually um, to 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 have an audience or actually uh, have those individuals or contact those individuals so that they can participate in these type of conversations. Right. Uh, either because they're busy or either because uh, it's, it's very difficult, uh, almost impossible to to reach them. And, and then other things that, you know, um, you know, sometimes there are women in the community who are very learned who don't want to be. Uh, public figures. This actually does exist, right? And we've come across this quite often, right? Uh, when we have our programs, right? So, so that itself, those th those are important factors uh, when we think about this thing. You know, so, so abortion, uh, which we would say is the taking of the life of a fetus um, um, for for a reason or for not a reason, you know. That is, you know, there's some nuance, some degree of nuance in our tradition. You know? And so we hopefully once Brother Ismail, he is able to get a connection. Because I really want him to really speak to this because he has some expertise in particular in the legal realm with respect to the Supreme Court. And I wanted him to speak to that. So hopefully we can have him once he returns speak to that uh, at the same time. Um, in the meantime, I, what I could possibly do, because because we definitely want to eventually come back around to the audience as well and have um, your answers, your questions answered, you know? So um, I, I think that I have my own questions for him, Brother Ismail, that I want him to speak to. Um, and then, um, you know, but we also want to have to have you all um, have questions as well. So what, what, I, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just read uh, uh, some of your questions for right now, and maybe we'll ask him again once uh, uh, he comes back, inshallah. So, uh, so using logic says, at some point in the broadcast, please discuss the following question. What is Islamic punishment for abortion in Islam? Um, now, the Islamic punishment for abortion, right? Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, um, either intentional or inadvertent, you know, is um, what it, the ulama calls a gurra, right? So which is fundamentally that the individual who actually um, causes a woman to miscarriage or to miscarry, you know, uh, then that individual was expected to pay what is called a ghurra. And the ghurra is described in the uh, books, in the hadith, uh, as a reference to a slave, right? So the freeing of a slave. A slave has to be given to someone, right? And, and you know, because fundamentally the idea is that a life has been taken, uh, even if it's incomplete life, you know, that a life uh, should be returned. And that life itself is incomplete in the sense of its freedom, right? And so that was looked, at, looked upon as being a uh, the sort of indemnity or that one has to pay in, in respect to it. Now, if the baby is aborted, 
um, 120 days after 120 or at 120 days or more than 120 days, then all the scholars agree that this itself is the taking of a human life. And so this is not only, uh, it, it is, it is it's not simply a matter of like that a person has to replace a life with a life by simply by giving uh, up a slave or by purchasing a slave for the family. Uh, uh, and this is, you know, of course, we don't have deal with slavery, of course, anymore, but this is what originally was the issue uh, during the time of the Prophet. Um, that, that fundamentally in this situation, there's a case that we call the, the either the dia had to be paid, which is the, the blood widow, we call the word, 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 right? Or the, um, the, uh, the family could, could demand that the person's life be taken as well, right? In the same way that if you were to murder someone, uh, a living, a, a, an adult or a child who's actually already been born, then that would be uh, the cost uh, of that, right? So, so it's not a punishless crime. It is a crime right, to abort the child overall, generally speaking, with exceptions that we do know of in our tradition where there's some scholars who allowed for it, uh, some without condition prior to 120 days, you know, others with condition uh, prior to the 120 days, you know, and then others allowing it during the first 40 days, you know, but generally uh, this is what we call ruhsa, is a dispensation, is a license, you know, which is a departure from the norm. The normative position of Islam is that um, taking a life is haram, right, without justification, right? So let's see if we can try this again. So we have Brother Ismail is back once again. So uh, how's it going now? <laughs> Yeah, it's better. Um, you know, I, I, subhanAllah, I'm, I just have such punishing, um, uh, you know, applications and tabs open. That everything is, everything, all my devices crash when I, uh, so I, I'm just going to hope and pray, inshallah, that Allah will Bismillah, 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 inshallah. Make it work, okay. Right. Yeah, so again, I'm going to go back to that original question. I mean, we don't, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of time on it, but that original question with respect to, um, um uh, why uh, you feel that you have a right to speak about women's issues, well, right? Well, I, um, yeah. yeah. I just want to mention, I mean, I'm assuming that you already, inshallah, spoke about it, but I, I mean, I just want to mention that, uh, uh, um, there, you know, subhanAllah, uh, first of all, that um, there's nothing in our religious tradition that says that uh, the men cannot speak about issues that, that relate to women. First of all, it's just, just generally, you know what I'm saying? And then, um, second of all, um, this is an issue that does not, in fact, simply relate to women because you and I, both men, that we were uh, infants in the in the womb of our, our mothers, you know, and um, so we have a very, we have a very strong stake in whether or not we were allowed to, you know, be born or we were whether we were killed in the womb, you know. So um, every human being uh, has um, a right uh, uh, to to have an opinion on this, you know, uh, or to to say something. And furthermore, more than that, you know. Um, uh, uh, the mother is the woman, in fact, is the means by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings into existence the, um, uh, the uh, uh, humanity, you know. Uh, of course, that can't happen without men, you know, um, but it certainly cannot ha happen without women, you know. And, um, it, you know, civilization itself and the continuation of the, uh, of the earth um uh depends on this question you know the questions of reproduction so so reproduction is not simply a female uh a, a woman's uh, uh issue you know furthermore mm -hmm. finally the, a really important point and the sister i was mentioning sister, sister Mary, Mary and Batar said you know in a, a very you know um thought provoking um response to me on facebook she says well uh um you know Hey, it's 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 not that uh, you you shouldn't say that um, uh, women are 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 uh, you know are somehow uniquely uh, guilty or whatever in these situations. That's not the case at all. Actually, as a matter of fact, uh, many many women are are forced uh, uh, by family, by society, by boyfriends, you know, um, by whatever to uh, to abort children, and especially even by government, like in China mm -hmm. and so on, you know. So, right. um, so it's not, it's not always that women are voluntarily, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, that this is solely a, a female issue, you know, so this is something that relates to humanity itself. It relates to, it, would it, would it be great to have women, um, discussing this? Yes, it, it absolutely would. And if, if, um, 
you know, there, there, there are, um, you know, w women out there. The unfortunate um, fact of the matter is there are very few people anyway, in general, who mm -hmm. have uh, anything other than a um, very, um, in fact, uh, let's say one-sided and wrong view on this matter. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so just to have any random woman, just because she's a woman, uh, is not going to yeah. guarantee that you're going to get any um, uh, good substance. You know, you have right. to look, look to the substance and stuff. Look to uh, actually, in fact, that's the other thing is look to look to what is being said instead of who is uh, saying it. It was Ali and said, no, uh, know the man by the uh, uh, truth and not the truth yeah. by the man, you know, right. or, or in this case, individual, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yes, yeah, so I, I, when I would add to like the the, the issue of um, of of women and their pregnancies and how they're uh, sometimes forced to abort them and how they're adversely affected by that. That you know that the question is the, the issue is not only about women. This is about men too because it takes two to tango, right? You know, so someone impregnated that woman. <laughs> And that man who impregnated that woman has some 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 say so or should have some say so about what happens with the child that is now growing inside of her. That's right, because the 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 uh, the, husband, the father is also you know um, even though we we recognize the uh, absolute mm -hmm. elevated and unique uh, status mm -hmm. of of the woman, you know, when it comes to uh, to um, uh, to child birth. I mean, this is one of the things that. Uh, Allah has um, uh, elevated women in, in having this status in their, um, you know, in their role in, in, in this. It's, it's uh, you know, um, and that's why, <laughs> that's why, the, you know, I mean, this is the famous uh, is saying, like, one of the um, Sahaba was uh, uh, car carrying his uh, mother around his, uh, on his back around the, the, the Kaaba. Mm -hmm. And he saw the Prophet and he said, "Did I have I um, uh, have I fulfilled my duty to her?" And he said, "You have not even paid her back for one contraction." Yeah. So uh, it would be, uh, um, you know, we, we, we reject absolutely all this, uh, you know, denigration of, of women. And uh, it's very, it, not only in very poor taste, it's, it's also very contrary to um, Islamic Sharia. But at the same time, we do not um, uh, say that, therefore, men cannot have any, uh, you know, cannot say anything. Right. About yeah. And then one final point of that is like, there's a uh, famous story by Imam Madik, where um, a man comes to him saying that, oh, my, my father, he's, he's in a different city and he has sent me a message that he wants me to come to him, wants me to travel to him. Uh, but my mother doesn't want me to travel. And so what should I do? Because now he's going to me, should I obey my father, yeah. obey my mother? So yeah. my mother's response was, abak, well, that's you know, say, obey your father, but don't disobey your mother, right? <laughs> and fundamentally, what he was saying is that don't travel. Right? In other words, give more right or weight yeah, to yeah, what yeah. your mother actually uh, wants for you in that situation, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, and um, so so now so abortion, so so we, I think everyone knows what abortion is, you know, for the, for the important part, the, I think the first and primary question is, is abortion permissible? And if so, who says so and why? Right, right. I mean, from an Islamic perspective, because I think that most of our, our listeners are here for that perspective. So, so alhamdulillah, yeah, I have you here, Sheikh, because uh, I am not a Sheikh uh, and I am not able, uh, just to say from the very outset, I am not able to do taji or uh, weighing between which is the correct opinion and which is not a correct opinion. I can only say um, uh, I do have the, uh, alhamdulillah, some uh, uh, background uh, knowledge and Islamic uh, 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 education and studies that I learning that I can um, uh, do some uh, research with the assistance of others and so on. Um, and I can say what my research uh, I have uncovered and what I have found in that research. Um, and I, so I can only say what the ulama said uh, according to what I have read, but I cannot uh, obviously do a, a way between those and say who was right and who was wrong. I, I can only say what they said, but also let me say that I, first of all, am um, uh, openly admitting that I'm a follower of the Maliki Madhab. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that it matters in this situation, Athari Hanbali in Aqidah. So um, uh, there's a lot of talk about all oh, the nuance of, uh, you know, uh, uh, Islam and, and abortion and, and, and so on. And unfortunately, this talk about nuance, um, uh, when people mention nuance, uh, what they're really trying to do is to say, therefore, Islam is um, black and white identical to Roe v. Wade, <laughs> you know, to the most. You know, so they so they actually say that they actually abandon the, um, um, you know, the notion of nuance, because what they're really trying to say is, 
um, you know, that it's really, uh, it's at least analogous or parallel to uh, liberal uh, conclusions on what should and should not be allowed uh, with abortion. Right. But um, uh, now that's that's an extreme view. Let's dispense with that as ab absolutely not. Um, you know, uh, uh, that's that's not a, 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 a sincere way of arguing and discussing, mm -hmm. or, or or an intelligent way. But Islam, in fact, does have a range of views. And so, what are the, what is that range of views? The range of views. In fact, this is not actually all that complicated. It's not that nuanced per se. Okay, we can it, it can be broken down actually pretty quickly. First of all, um, we, we know, and, and there's very, very slight disagreement about this, but we uh, more or less know that uh, the soul is, uh, the angel blows the soul into the uh, uh, infant, into the, uh, the, the fetus, developing fetus at 120 days from conception. Mm -hmm. So that prior to 120 days of conception, um, uh, the soul has not entered um, uh, the fetus and the, uh, the, the fetus is a, um, in fact, and I, I know we've discussed about this, but I and I just found uh, some uh, uh, some citation of the, the, the fetus. Most of the them I considered the fetus at least at a certain stage uh, mm -hmm. to be alive. Um, but and they use the term um, life and 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 shall we? Can, by the way, anything that is mentioned here, we can use. Uh, uh, we can bring citations of. Eventually, I'm going to publish all this in an article. An example is, for example, let's say if the child, if the fetus is born alive, then this these are the consequences. And they're talking. They they mention this before 120 days. I mean, they they use the term if the fetus is born alive. You know, um, meaning if it's moving, if it's you know if it if it's crying and so on, and which, which and movement we know happens before insolment. So. Um, and uh, some of the ulama said that li uh, life, uh, uh, the, the, the animal is alive in the sense that, I mean, the, the fetus is alive in the sense that uh, there are many things that are alive that do not have souls. You know, so animals are alive, even uh, vegetables and so on are alive, but they, uh, they, they don't have souls. Now, the important thing to notice is the human being is not only a soul. It is, the human being is not, you know, uh, the soul, the, the human being is the soul and the body. So... Mm -hmm. um, uh, so there is something of the human being there. It is just does not have the uh, uh, the soul. Okay, so um, it is absolutely forbidden in the in the uh, ijma or a consensus of the ulama that, uh, of the Sunni Muslims and in fact Shi'i uh, mm -hmm. that it, uh, uh, abortion is, is forbidden after insolment, except uh, with the only exception that m the vast majority of ulama made was. Uh, if the um, uh, the life of the mother was under direct, um, serious, clear threat, um, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, abortion after insolment could be uh, performed. Mm -hmm. um, but some ulama, including Hanafi ulama, including mentioned by Ibn Abidin, and everyone cites Ibn Abidin as, oh, and they portray him as being like, again, identical to, or more or less identical to like Roe v. Wade, or at very least, um, the, uh, you know, the, the, some sort of um, super lenient um, uh, thinker. Or, uh, he cites uh, scholars who said that actually a um, uh, Hanafi scholar, the man who said that abortion is not permitted even to save the life of the mother. And here's what they said, recall. Mm -hmm. What they said was because the death of the um, so insold uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 child is certain if you kill it, you know, yeah. but yeah. the death of the mother is not certain because it's you're you're speculating. You're speculating about the possibility, you know. Of course, doctors may um, have a medical certainty and and so on and so on. But in their reasoning, they said the, the mother's alive. The ch the child's about to die when you kill it. It's not necessarily known whether the the mother will die or not. I, I I'll mention that that's a, um, a mm -hmm. minority opinion. In fact, perhaps there's some way of actually harmonizing between those those mm -hmm. two. Uh, opinions in a way that makes sense. So we cannot, we as Muslims, I mean, this has to be very clear, we as Muslims cannot advocate in any way for any policy um, or any approach by the government that permits um, abortion after 120 days. Ibn Hazm, uh, many, many, I don't know mentioned this, but Ibn Hazm says this very, very explicitly, and he was someone who believed that uh, abortion prior to 120 days is more or less, if unless I'm misunderstanding, more or less um, mutlaqan uh, uh, allowed, um, you know, and so he's actually in the very tiny minority in his view on the permissibility of abortion by 120 for insolment. But he said after insolment, um, that, um, the, uh, that 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 um, killing a child after insolment is the same is equivalent uh, tantamount to killing a believer 
because he, uh, because uh, um, because the soul is on the fitra, and he said that the fitra is essentially the same thing as a, 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 a believing soul. I know there's some difference of opinion on that question, but in, in any event, um, and, and he, he he said he's and and he actually acted. Uh, he he built a fit, his fiqh position on that. He said because he said there's no there's no uh, expiation. For the dia, for the blood money, for uh, for killing a child um, uh, uh, in the womb after insolment, um, because there's no expiation for um, uh, uh, for murder of, of a believer, you know. So he he didn't only this isn't not just rhetorical. This is actually moral and 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 theological, and also had a um, uh, a legal um, uh, 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 um, uh, ruling built upon uh, those things. Okay, so. Uh, there is no one who ever uh, said uh, someone I, I saw someone saying that that uh, I, I don't know. I don't know of anyone who ever said that abortion is permissible for any reason after 100. Now, the, the, the question that we're here to talk about is what about a what about a law um, uh, or government regulation or policy or whatever that permits uh, uh, abortion after 120 days. So it allows what is clearly haram by ijma that no one, no Muslim has any business advocating for, for. And, and this is basically, basically like Roe versus Wade, actually like allowed. Roe v. Wade, right, exactly, Roe v. Wade, or for that matter, any given hypothetical law, but Roe v. Wade right. allowed uh, um, abortions after uh, insolment. And, and not only did it allow it, but in fact mandated that a, um, if a, Woman, and again, we know women can be coerced. It, it's not always just the woman mm -hmm. deciding. But anyway, if mm -hmm. a woman goes and says, "I, I, I uh, choose to have an abortion for any reason, what or no reason whatsoever," um, uh, um, prior to viability, viability means the ability of the child to survive outside the womb. Mm -hmm. That government may not is is uh, may not interfere with that, and it is mandatory in that case that that child be killed. If that um, that insold uh, insold child be killed, if the mother so decide, desires. So so we know that Roe v. Wade allowed that. Now after so quote unquote viability, um, the uh, uh, the uh, Roe. I've got pause for a second. Sorry. So you said that Roe v. Roe v. Wade allowed for government to mandate an abortion. You're saying. Or, well, what I mean by by mandate in this case is that is that um, is that the um, uh, the, the the Roe v. Wade said mm -hmm. that um, that government may not um, impose any restrictions whatsoever on mm -hmm. abortion prior to viability. Mm -hmm. So viability nowadays, I mean, twenty five weeks or 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 less or whatever, give or take. The, the technology changes, but mm -hmm. um, but we know that insolment occurs at one hundred twenty days, and that viability does not occur until uh, long after that. You know, now there's a window there, but in any event, you know what I'm saying. So, so, um, so that it, so that after, so that prior to viability, uh, it was mandatory for that child to be killed if the mother so choose, cho chooses. In other words, there is nothing saving the life of this child. There is no barrier to saving the life of this child if the mother so chose, or apparently so chose if she's being coerced. Okay, so. So this is a very serious problem. This is there's no way to justify this Islamically. There's no way to justify it. There's mm -hmm. there's there's. I mean, uh, I like I'm not giving a fatwa, okay. But mm -hmm. what I am what I am saying is that that that, that um, uh, if someone can find a way to justify killing an, uh, mm -hmm. an innocent soul, um, you know, then then let's uh, let's believe that's going to require a fatwa. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know I don't know how you justify that. So so um. But the question is right. So the question is, what about prior to 120 days? Okay. So what did the ulama say about that? First of all, let's talk about the Maliki and uh, uh, position and uh, Imam Al Ghazali. The Maliki, Mu'tamid, or or um, uh, primary main position of uh, you know official, if you will, a position yeah. of the Madhab, is that uh, abortion is prohibited after conception. So um, uh, not that they believed that there was a soul present and so on, but just that for various reasons and various um, uh, articulations and uh, uh, values and aims and purposes that they were that they believed that the law was trying to achieve, they did not permit um, uh, abortion prior to. Uh, I mean, yeah, because that's because only uh, that no one's allowed to meddle with the process itself. Like once the process is begun. Then only a loss of panatata is allowed to interrupt that process, you know. So, so, so you have gotten, you have touched on something extremely, yeah. extremely important, and that is, um, an, uh, a, a very important aspect of this whole question, which is, what are the values and and uh, uh, um, 
uh, the legal philosophy, the moral philosophy, the ethical philosophy, mm -hmm. um, the uh, the anthropology, uh, in other words, the understanding of the human being and, and his and her or her purposes, um, uh, and and more more um, more fundamentally, understanding of reality itself and truth mm -hmm. itself and 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 um, uh, creation itself. What is the understanding of Islam, uh, and and how, and why? Um, and 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 how did that understanding motivate the both the positions of those who took very firm positions like the Malikis, or for that matter, those who took lenient positions like the Hanafis? Right. What was motivating? We have to understand what was motivating because it's critical, and we'll talk about this. It's critical to understand that Roe v. Wade is motivated by absolutely opposite, not just like some ways not congruent with. I mean absolutely opposite right. um anti-human anti-islamic anti-common sense anti-reason um uh, 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 uh um, understandings of the purpose of the human being of the um uh and of um uh, of mercy of, of of you know of, of virtue of all these things you know, it's just it's, uh, about, it's about like maximizing human freedom and autonomy. human freedom human, human yes and we'll talk about and 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 very importantly a very opposite understanding of the destination and purpose of the human um, existence yeah. itself. You know why? You know so 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 let's talk about again the Malikis. What did uh, and not just the Malikis, but others who um, put restrictions of one uh, degree or another prior to um, 120 days. So we talked about the Malik the Malikis. We talked about uh, the Shafis, and then we'll talk about their uh, what was mo uh, the, the 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 legal philosophy and moral philosophy behind it. So then you had uh, Shafi'is and Hanbalis, uh, and, and, and I'm not going to get into details here, but more or less, um, these uh, uh, people uh, imposed uh, uh, restrictions sometimes at 40 days. Uh, some, they forbid some, uh, some of, the, uh, of them of varying degrees forbade or, or um, uh, said it was makro, various. There, there's, there, this, this is where some nuance uh, lies and, and some of these differences of opinion. So, for example, Imam al Nawawi, and we can talk about, um, again, this relates to like uh, the, the, the ethical philosophy. He said that, um, uh, he said that if um, an abortion takes place prior to installment, and uh, um, uh, the 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 fetus has adamic features, has features, uh, human features. Uh, mm -hmm. Then th this is uh, um, forbidden, and there is a, uh, a punishment for whoever it was that, whether it was like a, a miscarriage that was caused by someone striking the woman, or it was a um, the woman intentionally did it mm -hmm. to herself by taking some kind of medication or some other thing, or um, or the husband pressured her or whatever. Whoever is responsible in this case, there is. Um, uh, there are there are penalties. You know, it's, in other words, it's forbidden. It's haram, uh, morally, legally, and legally there are penalties for it. Now, we can talk about this. It's important to talk about what penalties are appropriate and what, what the Muslims yeah. the ulama did. But that's not you know what we're talking about here. So, um, uh, so but look at this. Here's the thing. This is a really important thing. The the human features. The Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, "Do not strike people." Um, in the face, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to strike someone, uh, you know, if you're striking someone, don't strike him in the face. Why? What does the hadith uh, say, uh, no. Doctor Abdullah? <laughs> right. It's it's a, a, yeah. 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 And one of the hadith says because in Allah, uh, uh, um, which makes clear what the the right. is referring to and of course there there's there's a, a lot of uh wheel about what that means but what it means all of them agreed all of them agreed regardless of what the the yani the the the, the haqiqa is um which is in fact un, unknowable to the to the human being the the reality is that it means the karama of the human and the karama of especially the face because the face is the um subhanallah the face. this the this face is the face that we put down onto the earth onto the earth and in um uh, and worshiping Allah, and, and the Prophet ﷺ said about, for example, horses. He says there, uh, there, there's khayr in their foreheads. You know, so there's the, something about the face. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a sign of life. It's a sign of life. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's the greatest sign of life because think about it: when you slaughter a, a lamb, yes. once you remove, once you remove the head, Nathan, and put it out of sight, Nathan, you forget that it was living thing, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, the, so in that way, we said that. And that we said. Well, and the no, it's interesting. Here we got into the influence, uh, into the nuance. Uh, and that we said that if there are um, Adamic features that are uh, 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 symmetrical um, on both sides, then there's then it is. Uh, there's punishment, but if there's only, for example, one hand or only one, you know, one side of one face. But the, the thing about that is we know now medically that that's 
actually doesn't happen that way that unless there's some major deformity that mm -hmm. uh, there is in fact a symmetrical end of, and if uh, so but what they did and here's a really important thing those beyond the Malikis who were really into uh, or they really focused on uh, the stage of, of um, pregnancy in Telsuiter, which is means the, 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 the formation of the, the crafting of the, um, of the human features, um, or Tachdiq, also the same thing. They looked at, the, the, the question for them was, examine the discharge. Examine what is, what, um, what the woman, uh, what is, um, what sakata, you know, what, what came out, you know, um, yeah. and look at it and examine it and see if it, if this, um, if it was merely, uh, fluids or, or, or a placenta or tissues or things that had no uh, human appearance, then for these are the men among the who mentioned this among the Shafi and Hanbali and so on. For them, uh, uh, and, and in fact, Hanif, many Hanafi discussed the same thing. For them, uh, uh, it was not haram in, the, in those situations. But the but what became haram is when there was uh, some uh, uh, human uh, features and some. Yeah, in other words, in other words, that the the presumption was that. For those who allow for abortion prior to 120 days, right. presumption was that they were not taking a human life, right? Yeah, they didn't. Right. Yeah. So this is a. It wasn't a living thing yet in their minds. Right? Well, I, I think the issue of life is somewhat. Um, yeah, it wasn't a. It wasn't a human. Right. That, that's the thing. You know, it wasn't a human. You know, so yeah. that was in there. But as many people have pointed out, from Sheikh Hamza Yusuf to others, I mean, p people who actually really disagreed with Sheikh Hamza and his opinion in his article in Ranobati, which is a. A seminal argument, a, a, um, article, and should be read. Even those who uh, would disagree that we we shouldn't re we shouldn't consider uh, because Sheikh Hamza argues that we should consider insolment to happen at 40 days because of new mm -hmm. medical knowledge and so on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a really wonderful paper, and I can't recall the author, the Hanafi scholar who um, in the UK who disagreed with him on that, and he explained why. But he said, nevertheless, it, it's a, a, actually focusing on insolment is not. Um, is not really the heart of the matter. What that, has that to be? Salman Yunus, uh, no, no, that, not, 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 not Sheikh Salman. Not Sheikh no. Salman is someone I can't. I can't remember, remember who it was. But we, maybe we can link to it in. in, in right, right. But he says uh, he, he he points out that because of this very serious focus of the mm -hmm. ulama on taswir on 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 the creation of features, what we uh, of human features, what ha what needs to be looked at now is um, what we are now aware of in terms of the formation of the uh, of the fetus, which happens mm -hmm. much earlier. Than mm -hmm. would have been um, and and uh, uh, would have been observable and what was known, mm -hmm. uh, and he highlights a statement in um, um, Ibn Abidin's uh, um, uh, Hashia. Uh, he 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 highlights he highlights some quotes that are uh, Ibn Abidin brings you know compiles many. It's a very useful treatment of the issue because he he compiles many statements. Uh, in fact, many dis even uh, contradictory uh, statements from uh, Hanafi um, For the sake of completeness, he brings them all together. And um, so he cites some uh, Hanafi scholars who said, uh, some Hanafi uh, predecessors of his, Ibn Abidin, Ibn Abidin does, who um, uh, mentioned, they said that, uh, that uh, uh, abortion prior to takhriq uh, is not permissible, and that is um, insolment. They they equated in in Solomon, the breathing in of the soul with with um, uh, the the creation of the features and uh, Ibn Abidin says and he's actually coming much later and um, you know he says uh, this is um, uh, clearly wrong this is mistaken because if if what he meant is is this because. Um, we know that, uh, in fact, uh, the formation of, of features happens before insolment. So yeah. it's quite possible that these uh, yeah. Hanafi ulama, what they really were trying yeah. to do, yeah, what they really were trying to do was not to allow um, uh, abortion unrestrictedly or with excuses up until insolment, right. but rather up until the creation of features, the yeah. uh, human features. So the question really is, everyone's talking, you know, in, in Western discourse, we tend to focus mm -hmm. on insolment, but if you read the um the the classical works and discussions in, in mm -hmm. arabic um in so many yeah we, everyone i mean that that's 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 the outer boundary everyone knows that yeah. but yeah. but but the real subject of nuance and debate is the issue of human features their yeah. creation their formation and that is something that does depend uh heavily on our knowledge contemporary medical knowledge you know so um yeah there are a few things i wanted to to yeah to, to like um yeah like coming back, for instance, Jake Humza's article, and he talks about the issue of like uh, reevaluating the uh, when insolment occurs. You know, right. I think there's another way you can approach this as well, which is to redefine like what insolment means. In other words, this assumption is that okay it has been for many centuries that uh, 120 day the 100, well, 120 day mark is the sign of of now uh, personhood, complete personhood has has occurred. Right, you know. 
you know, so when the child comes out alive, you know, naturally assuming of course, it makes a you know, scream or moves things like that, right. then the child is, is entitled to inheritance, right? Uh, at, yes. at that point too. But there's another way to look at that, which is that that uh, ensoulment could also be a reference to um, uh, when the human being is given the seeds of consciousness, right? Right. In other words, uh, like for instance, in the in the, the in theology, in Muslim theology, and then also in the Quran, the Quran actually speaks about you know it uses the word roh, but it also talks about nafs, right? And, and so so in Arabic, you know that these terms sometimes synonymous and sometimes they're they're, they're the same, right? So some say that nafs is the state of the roh, right? <clears throat> but the Quran also doesn't define what the roh is. What is the soul, right? Right. If anything, the Quran says. You know that if they ask you about the, the the soul, you know, say the soul is from the affair of your Lord, you know, and of knowledge you've only be given a little. So we really don't know for certainty what exactly the hadith meant, right? By that we do want what the might assume that it meant, right? You know, yeah, yeah. there's one verse that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Allah uh, uh, anfusuhina motiha manamiha." That Allah He takes the 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 unfus, right? The selves or the souls. Uh, and when they die, and he also takes them when one falls asleep. And then, and then he holds back the one that he decrees death upon, and he sends forth the other into an appointed, appointed term. There are actually many Muslim theologians who say that the human being has two souls, right? You know, or two, you know, two nafs, the, the nafs sand, right? You know, there's one for wakefulness and one for sleep, right? You know, so in other words, um, the the fact that we're able to detect a heartbeat early on, right, right, it's is is simply a reference to, you know, the sort of the the, 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 the animalistic soul, the sort of the the the, the 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 soul that animates the body, keeps it sort of running. You know, on the roar in the hadith could be a reference to again when Allah sends down right that thing which is the foundation of your true personhood, your your aqal, then it starts to develop, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Allah knows best, you know. But there is definitely something profound about Sheikh Hamza's suggestion, yeah. even if we may disagree that okay, insolment happens after 40 days there are hadith actually that give that impression right but you know but they, they may, there's some hadith to say uh, the angel comes after 40 days or comes after 45 days or 42 days there are those narrations in the sahih of the man muslim right but it doesn't say that the right. that the uh, my recollection doesn't say that the soul is brought with the angel but the angel does visit at, at that at the moment allah allah, allah right you know, so yeah I, I figured that throw that in there because i do yeah. think that uh, and, and the reason I, I wanted to bring this up is that the focus on one, whether or not it's permissible, or two, uh, when life begins, um, to an extent, a really superficial um, uh, or non substantive, really, questions in the sense that the Quran is largely a book of ethical teaching, right, as opposed to a book of law, right? that the number of verses that are legal far. Uh, are far fewer than those that are encouraging us to uh, to do things that are just generally good, right? In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's not only concerned with like, don't do this and you got to do that, but also you should do this and you should not do that, right? So, 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 and I think that Muslims should sort of really think deeply about this, you know, because what happens is like when these, this type of issue comes up, that we get really bogged down into, okay, well, is it permissible, right? You know, or it's like pollution. Right. Religion right. is permissible. You can't deny the right. Yeah. To make the the right. Yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Right. So it, no, those are those are beautiful points in Sheikh Hamza's uh, paper, mm -hmm. as well as the the paper that I am talking about that uh, where he's disagreeing with him. First of all, obviously Sheikh Hamza had uh, has very strong uh, grounds for what he's arguing. He's not just uh, you know uh, yeah. uh, you know uh, just trying to you know invent things. Um, his paper is uh, coming from within the Islamic tradition, which is uh, very different from these other sort of arguments, which are basically coming from outside the Islamic tradition and looking for justifications within to justify some sort of uh, positions. Right. You know, 
But uh, and likewise, the paper that I mentioned, inshallah, which I will link to, um, which is disagreeing with Sheikh Hamza mm -hmm. on that point, is nevertheless also within uh, the Islamic tradition, um, mm -hmm. just as, for example, Sheikh Salman's uh, Muslim Matters mm -hmm. paper and so on. So, um, uh, so the, all these pa these these are unique efforts by mm -hmm. these three scholars to. Um, they're unique because they are, are um, they are attempting to uh, understand in our contemporary situation and contemporary medical knowledge, um, uh, um, uh, uh, attempting to apply uh, the, the the not only the the legal rulings but also as you mentioned the ethical and um, uh, the ethical uh, 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 spirit. I, I wanted to mention a couple of other things. One of them said something really interesting. I can't remember who it was, but I was certainly anyone who has any questions about uh, sources, just ask and we'll. Uh, respond inshallah somewhere um but again all this is going to be in um documented in the oh. paper i'm working on it but um uh so he said uh, the scholar said uh, look at adam alayhi salam he w was created and um out of clay and he sat without his um soul in him for i don't know x amount of years there's actually a hadith about that you know right, right yeah. and, and you know and and yet um mm -hmm. uh, uh the angels were uh you know ordered to prostrate to him and so on i mean mm -hmm. when that happened i'm not sure but in any event he was still Adam, you know. He was Adam, and he was a creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He yeah. just, he just didn't have a soul at that point. So we're, 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 we are as um, we human beings um, are not uh, only our soul. You know, we are a combination. We are, we are a soul and body, and we'll be res resurrected soul and body. You mm -hmm. know. So the mere fact of um, uh, a fetus not having a soul is does not. Uh, uh, actually dispose of the whole question, you know, and I, I wanted to mention this and I mentioned this in a YouTube video that I did But uh, Imam Shimpiti, uh, uh, the the uh, Mortanian uh, scholar who passed away a few decades ago, he said um, uh, In his discussion, he said if you on this issue, he said um, if it is um, uh, forbidden um, uh, for us to mutilate the faces of cattle as Allah forbids that because that's change, taghir, is changing the creation of Allah. And many of the ulama they, they forbade uh, um, abortion before um, I mean after taswir because of the taghir, the changing creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then how much more is it to mutilate the face of um, of, of Bani Adam you know this is a disgrace it's, it's, it's disgraceful um, um, is something huge that, that cannot be done just for nothing, you know, for no, for no reason, you know, um, for uh, just because someone ha has a whim. It, it, if you look at the Hanafis, the Hanafis again, they, they said, all right, there has to be some excuse, and they they allow they they, they said uh, they, um, uh, they said the ibahat al ijhad buniyata ala udhr. The, mm -hmm. uh, the permissibility of abortion is um, is built upon a, a, a good reason or good excuse, you know, that, um, and so some of them proffered what some of these potential excuses might, might be, and we might agree with some of the excuses or not, but if you look at even them, what they're trying to do is they're trying to avoid some um, greater harms, and so we, under, uh, yeah. because, because, and because they're understanding that the fetus at this stage or whatever before, whether they meant uh, in Solomon or whether they meant uh, Tell sweeter and they, uh, you know, whatever um, was not, in, in fact, a, um, you know, a, a human being or whatever at that stage, then they said, okay, in that case, then these other things come and they give an other, they give a ruhsa, you know, that, but it's not saying that there's a absolute um, right, right, right. right. A haq, you know, a haq, which is like what is due yeah. to you, you know, right, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and, that, and that's an extremely important point here. And I think that is also important to to even highlight how many abortions, uh, uh, for instance, uh, Muslims and and all and also like of course progressives, they, their argument is always okay. Well, um, what about when a woman is raped? And what about if a woman's life is is at risk? Right? You know, you're saying that even in those situations, you're not allowed to to abort the child. Um, uh, but when we uh, you know, consider the stats. I, uh, I mean, how, how, what percentage of, of women actually have abortions because of rape or incest or because of the um, uh, risk to their lives? And yes, and, and, and even in those such cases, okay, for example, the, the case of Zina or, um, or, or, or um, Jabbar, like, you know, um, what was it, Jabbar, the, the, the forceful, um, rape or something right, uh, yeah. such horrible situations yeah, yeah. yeah in those cases 
Um, many of them have said, no, that's not, uh, abortion is not permissible even there because right. it's, it's, we know it's not permissible after 120 years. We're talking, wait, all of this about permissibility is I'm talking about before 120 years. Right. It's never permissible after 120 days except right. to save the life of them. But right. prior to 120 days, because they said that the, the child is not responsible for the sins of its father. You right. know, it, these, this, you know, so, so there's no, um, there are many other said that, although some Hanafis did say that this was, yeah, yeah there, there's the minority opinion that, for instance, it said that if, if it's because of Zina and if a woman is afraid that she was going to be stoned to death, that she could, you know, yeah, that she could have, you know, have an abortion in a situation like that, you know, the extreme minority position, right? You know, yeah, but yeah extreme it's, minority because one, one, Adam, one Hanafi Adam said, for example, if the, um, uh, if the environment that you're in, let's say like you're in Dar al Kufr, you know, in a land of disbelief and you fear. That the child will um, this again before 120. The child falls into um, uh, you know disbelief and uh, and uh, and corruption and so on. Then you can um, do it in that situation. But that same anime said, but the uh, the the ruling the hukum changes uh, with taghir uh, zaman with the the changing of the environment. You know, I mean of the, of the, of the era and the time. So they didn't say that's like absolutely. They said that that such a fatwa or such a ruling would not apply if the person was not in such a situation. We don't find the people in our time and day who are making these arguments for uh, the, the, the alleged Hanafi, their their interpretation of the Hanafi view. We don't find them saying, "Oh, because we fear the um, our children will fall into kufr, you know, or will fall into disbelief, something like that." No, they're not making those arguments. So we have to. Um, if another really important thing is, it doesn't make much sense. I, I, I'm trying to figure out how, where does this come from? Where there's this like suddenly. The Hanafi view, which is um, allegedly the Hanafi view as it's being portrayed, is somehow the only Islamic position. That's the only Islamic. That, that's the, the, the Hanafis, certain Hanafis allowed it in such and such situations. And so therefore, uh, uh, um, any other opinion, uh, if that were to be like the actual like Sultan, you know, <laughs> that, that, that would be unjust. Why? What they're saying is that the those who had more restrictive views on abortion are um they're doing tarjih they're saying no these people are are wrong they're saying imam al-ghazali imam malik these people were unjust that's yeah, what right. they're yeah. saying that's yeah, what totally. they're saying yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean you can't you can't say that the most you can say let, let's say hypothetically that there mm -hmm. were state laws across the border or any given state that said mm -hmm. now okay we're going to pass a law that abortion is forbidden from conception except to save the life of a mother now mm -hmm. Let's let's assume that the punishments are not like something that is verges into the unjust. You know, what I mean, it's something like let's say the punishment is only on the because this is what many of the um, uh, such uh, well many laws that are forbidding abortion or having more restrictive than Roe type things are actually for, are actually punishing the um, abortionist, not the woman. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so the woman is not even being subject. And anyway, um, but let's say that the uh, that the punishment was you have to pay blood money to the father, or you have to pay blood, pay blood money to someone's relatives. If the father was involved in pressuring you, then he doesn't get any blood money. But let's say his relatives get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say that. All right, that's that's. I mean, we wouldn't. They wouldn't call it blood money, but let's say they call it a fine. Let's say there's a, there's a fine if you abort your child after um, conception. And let's say, I mean, I would assume that they would like if it's like, you know, after like viability or nine months or you know something like that. Now there's serious charges if I mean, and, and that would also comply with Islam. So let's say that there's a, um, a more serious charge. Let's say that that's um, the law. Now you can't say that that's unjust. All you can say is. That law um, uh, is in, in harmony uh, to greater or less an extent with the opinions of the Maliki Zidim uh, um, al Ghazali and is in f more severe than some other opinions that are within uh, the Sharia. Look, wh what about smoking, for example? I'm just going to give an yeah. example. Smoke, um, smoking is, har uh, is, uh, uh, is illegal to purchase cigarettes um, in many states. If you're younger than 18, or to sell cigarettes to, to a shop, right. well, uh, some of them agree with that that, that there should be that there's you know that and maybe even that there's tazir for 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 a situation like that. You know what I'm saying? But other ones would uh, hold it to be uh, uh, no that you know some like Hanafis in Turkey and so on will say no, it's not uh, it's not how it's not forbidden you know to to smoke and so therefore the government doesn't have a right to yeah so yeah. Those, yeah, yeah no, I mean, I mean, there. No one's saying. No one's saying. Oh well, there is a law that is more restrictive than the least restrictive opinion yeah. that we can possibly find. There's no. There's no um, principle in Islam that the siyasa or that the the um, the, the the law that um, um, that happened that the men uh, and women, uh, let's say, like the human beings uh, implement, um, has to be um, in a race to the most lenient. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. The, you know, right. like, yeah. What is our law going to be? What we're going to do is we're going to find the most lenient opinion in every single matter, and that is going to be the law. And any law that is more um, uh, uh, strict or restrictive yeah. or whatever, then that most lenient opinion is thereby unjust and is thereby um, forbidding. Subhanallah, some people have said, yeah. how how is it that we are uh, celebrating the end of a um, uh, of a law uh, of a, that more restrictive, right? What, is, one, yeah, two, right. Yeah. Then, yeah. then what is uh, one, yeah. uh, what, the end of a law that's less restrictive than the than, than, than the supposed new law that's going to come in, right? Exactly, but they're ignoring the fact that it's, no one no one is proposing a law that is more strict than the Maliki and, and uh, right. opinion. No one, right. no, right. There, there is no law anywhere that anyone is proposing that would um, forbid. Uh, um, uh, abortion from conception and even um, uh, even blo blocking it in the case of uh, uh, a mother's life in an actual serious uh, 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 danger. No one's saying that. No one's arguing that. So so there is no there. You there, it's not possible to make any kind of argument that there is um, uh, uh, any of these laws are unjust without at the same time saying that the that the um, uh, Maliki opinion which corresponds to it is also unjust. And you're calling Imam Malik. Unjust, and that's you can say you disagree yeah, with it. Yeah, and I would say, like, your point too, like, for instance, you find, let's say, for instance, Morocco, right? So, Morocco is a Maliki country, right. and in Morocco, um, a woman who is, um, you know, who's a young, young adult who's past puberty is not allowed to marry without her, her guardian's permission, at least the last time I checked, you know, at least when I used to study there, used to be the law, right? right? You right. know, right. I believe that's still the same, same law. Now, right. is anybody saying that, okay, oh, because they don't allow the Hanafi exception, right? Then Morocco's law is unjust, or in or in um, or in, in another country, or or even let's say, for instance, like the 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 minimum age of marriage. They right. set the minimum ages, like exactly. which really has really no basis. Yeah, yeah. From, yeah. from you know the, the the text of Quran or Sunnah and things like that. You know, right, right. So, like, so so you set a minimum age. Oh, is this doing an injustice because it's not as expansive or you know, um, sort of, uh, you know, right. uh, it's, or it's, it's more restrictive than, yeah, yeah, you know, the the prior. I mean, the yeah. Islamic law would have been from the time of the Prophet which right. didn't have right. any age limit except <clears throat> on on marriage, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so people are very inconsistent, and it's very clear to me that many people who actually make those type of arguments, um, uh, they really have an edge to grind, right? You know, and it's, yeah. and it's while claiming that okay, well, we're not, you know, we're we're trying to just give people real Islam, but we're not involved right. with the um with the uh the, the culture right you know this political culture you know that that's here right versus left right you know we're just giving people pure islam and they equate islam yeah. with the most or the least restrictive opinions right because you're not allowing the least restrictive opinion to exist then you actually are uncompromising you're undermining islam right, right? right. and saying that okay well uh, the 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 preservation of Islam is more important than the preservation of life and progeny, right? You know, and, and what Islam in this case means, oh, uh, uh, allowing a, a uh, an abortion for any reason at all before or even after 120 days, right? And so yeah. it makes no sense at all. Right. I mean, you can't, you, you know, you can't take, um, you, you, you know, hey, look, this this is a very common methodology. It, you know, many people they have. A pre-existing um, worldview and framework, you know, that they see the way that they see the world, and they um, uh, they use um, uh, uh, quotes and uh, you know citations and and um, and things, and will cut them out and and in a collage type fashion, will map those things onto their worldview, you know. So now what you've done is you have you have a worldview which you have apparently like sort of justified in its every aspect by somehow or another like um finding qu uh, quotes out of context which you then plays and and you've created something that no one would recognize including any of the people that you quoted from an example of that is um uh, for example uh, one of the other i forget who it was but it was is the issue of marriage the um the the the, the four methods have different shurult on on marriage you yeah. know so one of the other said that if you were to take um, all of the methods and combine their most lenient things, you wound up with uh, a marriage that is nothing but um, right. hijab and qubul, you know, right. <laughs> because yeah. there's no, you know, no witnesses, no, uh, no walid, no, uh, you know, and so, and so you wind up with, uh, with something that no one 
would none of the people who you're taking from would actually recognize as a marriage. You've actually created mm -hmm. some new new thing, and that that's what we uh, cannot do. You know, I mean, we just have to be very uh, careful, and that's what we're doing. You know, and in, 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 if if in, in make sure that's not what we're doing. You know, so yeah, so it's kind of you know. Right. So I mean, here's the question: Like, so if assuming that Roe versus uh, Wade is more accommodating to this to the Sharia, I mean, it's yeah. something, right? Um, I mean, what are your thoughts about the fact that it also allows what the yeah. Sharia expressly that, did? This is, you know? this is and, yeah, right. This is an extremely and, important. Are extremely the violations important. against the Sharia, you know, greater than you know, um, or I, I would say, are the violations of what Sharia forbids greater or lesser uh, than uh, what it what it uh, the restrictions that are produced by um, yeah. endorsing sort of like Roe yeah. versus Wade? That's a that's a really important point, and let's just like preface that with some uh, some uh, to lay to lay a foundation here, which is to say that uh, we understand, of course, that the that American law is not this. First of all, is not an Islamic country. I don't know where an Islamic country is. You know what, 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 what we mean by that. Um, you know, that has, uh, but uh, in any event. Um, our, the law here does not even purport to um, uh, reflect what Islam, uh, uh, what uh, uh, the laws of, um, of Islam. Okay, so we know that. However, uh, that being said, first of all, all human societies, to some degree, um, are going to have some similarities in what they uh, deem to be beneficial and harmful, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala put that, um, uh, uh, um, uh, created us with that understanding and that knowledge. So, for example. Uh, some of the ulama mentioned that all societies understand things like, for example, shukr al munam, uh, gratitude towards the benefactor, or um, or um, as something that, that is good, for example, you know, or something that is you know, praiseworthy. It's something praised, you know, and and this is just essentially across the board in in all human societies. And then you have um, uh, things that they recognize as evil, for example, khiyan or betrayal, um, mm -hmm. uh, and and things like that, which they all recognize as um, being. Um, Something evil and mm -hmm. harmful, with the with the understanding and knowledge, of course, that to greater or lesser extents, um, um, fitra can be uh, come corrupted, you know, and mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, uh, in 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 society in general or in individuals, so that we know that um, you know um, people differ over what is um, good and bad, even you know if if they have no revelation and if they have no revelation to clarify um, things, because there are some um, there are many things that we that the human being can arrive at uh, aqlan or even just uh, from their fitra to know um, what is bad and then there are those things which um, uh, require clarification and so on from revelation and which uh, are even potentially impossible uh, to know so what we're talking about when we talk about the american law and to the extent that it corresponds to um, uh, to uh, islam's uh, law we're talking about two things number one we're talking about the actual outcome Okay, so uh, if there are outcomes that are, um, uh, let's say, like uh, would be deemed within Islam to be um, some uh, something good, uh, in the sense that it somehow or another either corresponds to um, uh, actual Islamic uh, or ru rulings in Islamic law, or uh, somehow or another, nevertheless, if they don't correspond exactly, they at least advance some interests. You know, so for example. Um, uh, laws against highway robbery. You know, it's um, there's the Hobbs Act, there's the federal law, which makes it illegal to like um, uh, to ambush people and kidnap them. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. There's a law that that is you know um, that, that in Islamic of Hiraba, which is that. You know, I mean, there's no difference. You know, and the, are the punishments exactly the same? Well, you know, it just actually in many ways they correspond, and in many ways they diverge. You know, so um, because there's a head for that. You know, so so um, there is not a, a, a American law. Does not purport to have to be based on what revelation says about what to do in those kind of situations but nevertheless they both have a, a similar aim and and um and they also actually have similar outcomes okay so then the other well, and i want to i want you to finish that point you know but i yeah. just wanted to interject here and i mean i mean even yeah. though they may not be the same i mean is it is it a muslim's place anything to actually want it to be more islamic well, yeah. Okay. Yes. Now that that's actually the next point. Yeah. The next step, yeah. next point we, and so then the other, then the other issue is, um, mm -hmm. let's say like, regardless of what the outcomes are, mm -hmm. what about the motivating, um, values and so on? Well, we do care about those too. The motivating, um, the understanding of like, let's say like the purpose of the legislation and, mm -hmm. and what's behind the purpose of legislation, meaning like essentially what is, what is the, what is the, what did the lawmakers and that situation, the human lawmakers understand to be 
the um, um, uh, uh, the good that it was attempting to achieve. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so, so yeah. So, so, um, uh, uh, so even where a law might have wrong um, uh, outcomes that don't actually like um, uh, advance that purported aim, we still care. That's still a relevant, uh, a relevant question because it means that the substance of the law and the understanding of what uh, of law itself and its purpose um, is at least somewhat, uh, let's say like um, uh, uh, sounds, you know, it's somewhat healthy, you know, it's healthier. So, so, so you might have a law that has its outcomes are actually um, uh, uh, good in the sense that they somehow correspond to some like um, uh, Islamic rulings, at least superficially, um, mm -hmm. but that in its purpose and its understanding of the, of the human being and the human nature and so on is bad overall. And such a law will tend to actually have many, many bad consequences, even if it has certain um, uh, good consequences, apparently good con uh, taken out of context or seen superficially because of the nature of things, because Allah uh, did not put khair in such laws, you know what I'm saying, that are motivated by such things. Now, on the other hand, you might have a law that is actually motivated by a very good understanding, healthy and sound and true understanding of um, the purpose of law and what and the per, and the, the 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 good of the human being, but that in the way that attempts to to get that, and in fact um, uh, is corrupting or is because of perhaps the the contemporary situation is 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 not achieving it, and so in those situations it might be um, uh, that. Uh, it, it, that's actually um, not entirely a bad thing because then uh, in those situations um, uh, the law might be changed. You know what I mean? In, uh, um, in, in its in its uh, actual effect. And an example of that is in the with the Sharia itself. We know with like the um, um, the 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 head of uh, stealing and, and cutting the hand off where uh, Omar said this is <laughs> in a, in a in a in a um, famine. He said this is not achieving the aim here. You know what I mean? Of, of the goal. So he so he lifted uh, temporarily. Now if that's the case with a head, then much less uh, likewise with a situation where I'll give it just really quickly. I'll give an example of the. Um, uh, um, uh, marijuana being illegal. It is actually a very sound, um, uh, uh, a healthy reason. Uh, there's a very sound, healthy reason within American law to forbid um, marijuana because it's harmful. I mean, this is a harmful substance. It really does harm people. You know, yes, there are many uh, uh, medical benefits, and that's that's actually not even that's not to the point. We can you know have exceptions for medical. I'm talking about putting out and blast getting hot. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's, there are laws that um, there are laws in many states still continue to be laws that forbid that, and they're there for a good reason because the uh, law wants to protect the intellect, and the law wants to protect the um, the the, uh, uh, the goods in society that are harmed, and familial goods that are harmed by people uh, being stoned out of their minds when they should be actually working and providing mm -hmm. for their families or going to school and stuff like that, so, or, or for that matter, uh, health uh, things, which should, the burden shifts to the whole society. So there's reasons and good reasons, but. Mm -hmm. I know people. I know people personally who who are in prison for decades for mm -hmm. for marijuana, and not even th that. Not even that. You, you take a guy who's um, uh, you take a guy who's uh, just driving down the street, and he's got a little bit of marijuana in his car. Okay, mm -hmm. the, um, he's pulled over maybe because he's black. And I, I know you don't like to go there, uh, Sheikh Abdullah, but let's. I mean, let's go there. You know, uh, so so he's in a heavily policed area. He gets his car confiscated because there's a law that says that the, um, uh, the vehicles, um, you know, the, uh, in such situ uh, legal situations can be confiscated. It's taken by the police. They auction it off or whatever. You know, they they, they have their pizza party or they, with this, you know. Money from his hoopty, you know what I'm saying? And then, and now he's and 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 he he loses his job because he goes into he goes to jail. Or, um, he loses his job now. He can't pay child support, and now he goes. Now he keeps getting thrown back in jail for contempt because he can't pay child support. You've ruined this man's uh, life, and now his family's his children are growing up with that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, because of what? Because you wanna uh, uh, because of marijuana? No, that now you are completely, uh, utterly undermining. The yeah. purpose of this, uh, of, of the good purpose of, of this law, which could be corrected if all you did, if all you did was to say anyone caught with um, with marijuana, uh, let's say an amount for use, um, I, I don't know, slap on the wrist or their pictures put in the paper and said, this guy's a stoner. He should get his act together. I, you know, any little thing like that. You know what I'm saying? Where, whereas um, for uh, whereas, let's say, like big, massive dealers. Now, those are people that you that you have appropriate laws to deal with so 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 that's a way you can fix you can bring a law back now how does this apply how does this apply to the roe v wade situation mm -hmm. yes it's it's a fact that um roe v wade allowed what some of them allowed roe v wade allowed abortion prior to um uh, in fact again as i say mandated in the sense that if a woman chose it then there was a mandatory that this abortion be carried out 
um, uh, prior to 120 uh, days, uh, in fact, prior to viability, which is much longer than anyway, but, but that, that, um, uh, that time period includes a time, uh, by force of logic, that, that, that uh, time period includes that time prior to installment. And that, um, and now remember, Roe does that without, um, the, uh, the government could not have put any restriction on it. So, in, uh, so, 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 so Roe actually corresponded to the views of very, very, a very tiny minority of Hanafi and a, and a couple of Shafi'i scholars mm -hmm. who said having an abortion prior, and if it hasn't, for example, pr having an abortion prior to 120 days is nothing different than blowing your nose. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 so mm -hmm. there, there are, I, I you know, it, it must be understood. There are very, very few mm -hmm. uh, scholars who actually said that. And those who actually said that are something that could be construed to mean that. Mm -hmm. I mean, look again, you know, we don't say that anything, I mean, scholars are, are capable of mistakes. And right. if you look at the Jumhur, you look at the Jumhur, I mean, this is an outlying thing. I mean, there's no conclusion. Uh, there, there are few conclusions possible other than this is a mistake in which he had. Yeah. I don't say it's a mistake. I'm just saying that it, the, 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 there's, that is possible. Right. There's, yeah, there's a vanishingly narrow <laughs> uh, window of, of there being any explanation for this other than mm -hmm. that they made a mistake simply because of the, 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 um, um, uh, the, the overwhelming uh, 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 evidence to the contrary that that's probably mm -hmm. not correct. But let's just say, let's just say it's good. But the most you can say, the most you can say is that Roe allowed what some outlying scholars of the Sunnis, respected scholars, said um, on this issue? That's the most you can say about Roe. You yeah. can't say you can't say anything better about Roe than that. And the and it did so. How did it did so? How did how did it do that? Did it do that through the um, uh, the um, uh, because it the nature of Roe and what animated it that that the philosophy behind Roe and that um, uh, that this somehow. Uh, corresponded in some way to Islamic values? No, it did so because Roe was motivated by several, I'll mention three key, there, there are actually many social and cultural and ideological forces and historical and even legal that led to Roe. Yeah. But but here here are the three main things that led to it. Number one, the sexual revolution. The sexual the, the term sexual revolution was invented um, and coined by a Freudian uh, uh, guy from um, from Germany who who um, who who said he wrote a book called The Sexual Revolution in the 40s and his his purpose was um, uh, uh, and he was also a, a, a radical communist his purpose was the liberation of human beings um, his philosophy is the liberation of humanity could only take place because the, there, there's this revolutionary ideology that came about with the um, Enlightenment and then um, you know the the and the the, the French Revolution and, and a strand of it which um, emerges as communism and um, uh, Marxism anarchism and, and Forbach and all these people they saw that um, uh, the the um, telos or the the aim of history mm -hmm. and the end of history and the the way that history was going. Um, and uh, was towards human liberation, and it was necessary for human beings to also work towards that. So human liberation, and that human liberation means you, uh, anarchy, essentially anarchy. You have the right to do what um, uh, uh, ever you want. You know. Yeah. So, so for example, the, the uh, famous uh, slogan of uh, um, the, this uh, of anarchists is uh, "There's a uh, desire armed." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Desire armed. This is the, the, the Google um, and the journal Anarchy. Their their thing was the, the Journal of Desire Armed, um, which is identical to the Satanic uh, Temple, whose thing, uh, whose uh, whose uh, um, uh, motto is "Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law." Do whatever you want. That's the whole of the law. Yeah. This is a, this is a very um, uh, evil, uh, extremely evil um, uh, ideology. Okay, and so the. Um, Put into more, let's say, like respectful and or was a respectable and, and incredible terms. The mm -hmm. idea is that the human being makes himself. He mm -hmm. is not, uh, he, and he must be, or she must be liberated from. Uh, this is the words of Margaret Sanger, the founder of. Uh, 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 I'm paraphrasing, uh, the founder of uh, Planned Parenthood, um, that um, tradition is like a dead hand which reaches out from the grave to the living to to uh, to um, to hold them back. You know, and that, um, and so they believe that uh, institutions such as um, marriage and uh, family and uh, religion, cert absolutely religion, um, were all obstacles towards human liberation. And they believe that sex, the sexual act, had to be separated from procreation 
uh, in order to become, uh, for sexuality to become the um, instrument and the spearhead of human liberation. This is a Freudian concept, but it also shows up in Nietzsche. It also shows up in um, many different uh, uh, thinkers who... Um, uh, Margaret Sanger. Yeah, Margaret Sanger. Mar yeah. Mar Margaret Sanger. So she, Margaret Sanger, as I mentioned in my YouTube video uh, um, earlier, it, um, uh, the her motto of her um, uh, magazine, which is pushing birth control and conception, but from, uh, from from what not not from other any value other than for liberation of all humanity and she said uh, she said women are are the spearheads of the liberation of all humanity and they cannot and men too she thought that women will liberate men but the, the liberation of women will break along the liberation of men and this can only happen when sex is separated from procreation so mm -hmm. The, uh, so, uh, uh, so the guy who wrote this book, um, uh, The Sexual Revolution, he introduced the idea that abortion had to be a part of that liberation. Mm -hmm. um, it had to be a part of that project because without, remo with, uh, without removing the consequences mm -hmm. of sex, then sex would always be um, uh, held, uh, would, would never be able to achieve its full uh, uh, potential as the liberatory weapon and liberatory instrument of human of, of humanity now yeah. he did he did he did happen to have some uh, yeah. uh, uh personal stake in there because he got his lover uh pregnant and forced her to have an abortion and then she committed suicide um mm -hmm. so it's it's very it's very well worth um looking to see into the personal lives of many of these men who were at the forefront of promoting abortion uh, you know, abortion unrestricted uh, unapologetic abortion uh, many of them were actually uh, philanderers and uh, uh, and uh, had a very personal stake in abortion being uh, legal because right. they didn't want to deal with the they didn't want to deal with the consequences. Another example is the guy who wrote who invented who invented the very idea of abortion or a right to abortion coming under the so-called right to privacy, which is the which is what Roe actually pins um, legal rationale on was so-called right to privacy. Which, by the way, no one even thinks about it anymore. No one no one talks about a right to privacy as somehow where the right, right so-called right to abortion exists. But that was actually the rationale of Roe, the legal rationale of Roe, or at least one of their legal rationale. So this guy who invented this um, idea, um, he uh, uh, he invented it in a, in a brief that was uh, filed in a Connecticut case that Roe very heavily relied on. Um, he's also the guy who, um, he was ACLU's legal director, and he's the guy who hired um, uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg at the ACLU originally. By the way, Ruth Bader Ginsburg actually opposed Roe on, for many reasons, interestingly mm -hmm. enough, on, on, on several grounds. Okay, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, which is worth mentioning. And, right. and actually, that's going to connect with the second uh, mm -hmm. uh, rationale of Roe, which I'm going to mention. So um, so this guy also, he said, look, I, he was interviewed later, and I'm going to quote this in, in my paper. He was interviewed later about his critical role that he, he's the one who introduced this idea to Judge Justice Blackman, who's, uh, who's the author of Roe v. Wade. Um, uh, he, he introduced it, uh, uh, this uh, legal rationale. And he, sa he said later, you know, he said, look, I put this in terms of like family and so on, like that it's important to the, you know, the privacy of the family, because that's originally what the, the I mean, very ironically, and it's very deceptive, you know, and, he, and, and the author says he said it with a wry smile. Like kind of like you know, like a crooked smile, and he said because because actually he says because actually I was I was very promiscuous in in um, in, uh, in the East Village um, uh, at the time in New York, and so I had a personal stake in abortion being legal. Mm -hmm. So he says it's funny because because um, uh, the so-called right to privacy originally came about in a case called Griswold, which mm -hmm. I have to read. Dobbs more carefully, but it may have actually over, uh, overturned Griswold. I'm not sure, yeah. but it certainly call, called it into the question. I just need to read that case more carefully. But anyway, um, he, uh, he said uh, um, uh, Griswold was a case um, uh, that preceded Roe in which Roe was like, you know, used as its precedent. Griswold said that it has um, made it illegal or unconstitutional, found it to be unconstitutional somehow mm -hmm. for a government to forbid um, uh, uh, married couples to use um, contraceptives. Mm -hmm. And so the language of Griswold says, oh, what are we going to allow the police to come into the married bedroom and so on and so on? So so um, and then and then they said the married the marriage bed is sacred and the family, the home is sacred and it's not a way, a place for um, the, the government to intrude and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So so um, they, they're using all this language, but the language that they were using was from an earlier era of the Supreme Court, which actually did care about family as a goal, as a. Uh, as a maqsid, you know, as a goal of the law was preservation of the family. Ironically, this guy, he himself is mocking and making fun of how he used this 
uh, um, uh, uh, rationale of, of protecting the family and dis and flipped it on its head and mm -hmm. to make it uh, um, to make it a um, means of actually um, uh, um, harming the family. You see? Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, yeah, so yeah, that really yeah. that really sums up good. I, you know, the question I was going to ask was um, whose interests are served by the perpetuation of a, a cult? Who else is who, Right. Who, who right. else's interests are served by this? What were the other uh, aims uh, that that led to Roe? The first one I mentioned is sexual revolution and, and sexual liberation. The second one is mm -hmm. the eugenicists. There yeah. is an a, there is an extremely important and and people want to ignore this because they want to memory hole it. They want to they they want to rewrite history. Uh, but you can't you can't do it because all of this do, this documentation is available. It's available in libraries and it's available on, online if you know where to look. And it's available in books. Yeah. Um, uh, um, Margaret Sanger herself was a um, a uh, very staunch uh, eugenicist. She believed that um, uh, that uh, uh, economic and racial groups, um, uh, uh, certain undesirable economic and racial groups, should not be able to have children. Also, uh, she was against the reproduction uh, by whites who were poor, who were, who were um, uh, hard of, uh, who, who had a poor vision, all kinds of, any, any kind of defect. They said that she said that um, she considered this to be harmful to the race. She had a, um, uh, they had a conference, Margaret Sanger chaired a conference called Improving the Race. And, and uh, the mm -hmm. proceedings are, are, are published in, 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 in the journal that she published yeah. and that she was on the masthead of. And, and um, they had it um, in 1939, mm -hmm. um, this conference, and, they, and, the, and, and the introduction to it, which is not written by her, it was written by one of her um, key people in what became Planned Parenthood, said, mm -hmm. we agree with Hitler mm -hmm. about, uh, about um, improving the race. We just believe that they're doing it wrong because they're actually trying to um, uh, have Lebensraum uh, by to have to, to to they they want to conquer more territory in order to in order to spread more um, more of the race. But we believe that we need what we need to focus on is not quantity like the Germans are doing, but rather on quality. She, for them, it was very important to limit. Um, uh, so there was there was an internal, uh, let's say, debate between mm -hmm. the in the eugenics community between those who wanted to um, have unrestricted um, white um, birth, or, or let's say not unrestricted. They didn't believe that, but they wanted to focus more on um, reproduction than they did on um, uh, limiting the. Um, reproduction of undesirables. So right. there's a case yeah. called Bell. Um, yeah, there's a there's a case Buck v. Bell, which is actually cited in Roe. Roe's the, the Roe cites Buck v. Bell in a in a positive way. Buck v. Bell was a case where. Um, decided by um, Oliver Wendell Holmes in a very vicious uh, statement that he said, which is a eugenics, it's the, it's the root of eugenics in, in America, where, uh, uh, which is a disgraceful chapter in America. Buck v. Bell um, involved a case where, which allowed, um, in which the state ordered to be um, uh, um, uh, 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 sterilized um, a, a, a woman because she was a, um, she was a, a so-called imbecile. She was in a, um, uh, and she was, uh, it, she was in a, um, in a home for, for people who were um, uh, mentally uh, disabled or, or not completely that. capable. Yeah, but, but the thing about it, the thing about it is, she, so she had a child. She had a child, and they said, "Oh no, no! Now we, we've got a um, uh, we've got a we've got a sterilizer." And so she, uh, her guardian, she through her guardians and some you know, like legal organizations tried to stop it. And um, and uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes, in his decision, the Chief Justice, he says three generations of imbeciles are enough, and he ordered her to be sterilized. Yeah. Roe v. Yeah. Wade cites yeah. Buck v. Bell as an example of um, uh, because Roe v. Wade says, "To be sure," uh, says the judge. He, uh, the Supreme Court said in Roe. Mm -hmm. um, People don't have unlimited ability to do whatever they want. There are limits to their to their autonomy over their bodies, right. and what and what it, and is C for example Buck v. Bell. So they said that actually they, they, the the row actually they made reference to like a racist. Uh, yes, a racist, uh, it, it, it wasn't racist because she was white, but it was eugenicist in the sense right, that it was you know. Right, right, so 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 she uh, so so Roe actually acknowledges there there are limits to human autonomy and one of those limits is is that if you are an imbecile if you are an undesirable then you do not have the right to have children that's yeah. what Roe v. Wade upholds, and mm -hmm. Buck v. Bell to this day, to this day, Buck v. Bell has never been overturned by any court. It it's continues to be, it continues to be good law, and so, and so, this is the, this is an example of the, another example of the eugenics uh, traces within, um, within Roe v. Wade are the fact that it's the court cites um, 
uh, uh, several eugenicists in its in its, its citations, it's uh, like to support its points. It, uh, for example, um, Christopher Teets, who was a um, who was a um, an Australian guy originally and was a, a, a CIA intelligence agent and so on, but but was also a, a doctor. He um, uh, uh, he was on the board of the American Eugenics Society, and he and he wrote a report for and as a, this now this, I'm not going to go too much longer in eugenics because but it's a very critical yeah. um, uh, 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 background. Yeah, we have. We had them with an hour thirty four. Okay. Go ahead, finish your point. Yeah, okay. to, uh, this last point, and then I'm going to be quiet and take questions. The la the last point is that um, uh, is population control. There was a, uh, um, a very important movement, and it still exists to this day. Trace of it still it still exists to the, to this day within our culture and within our society. That this fear that somehow the population was getting out of control, the population of the earth, and that and that uh, it had to be stopped because all of these mouths that were being born were, were going to make life difficult for the rest of us, for those of us who really deserve um, nice, cushy lives and so on. All these uh, you know people born in India, um, born in Africa, or born in the um, uh, uh, slums of uh, the slums of London and so on, who are who are. Um, who are eating up all our food and consuming up all our resources, and they're and they're dying, they're living miserable deaths. And of course, this is all going on at the time of the Industrial Revolution, when horrific um, uh, conditions, environmental and, and health conditions, are are are, are being posed. And prior to some government regulation of of of, of labor and uh, you know uh, uh, of labor abuses and so on. So so people were looking at this and they're like, oh, these these people are miserable. We need to actually put a um, uh, we need to stop these people from breeding, you know. Um, yeah. So, as yeah. a matter of fact, they, they said to themselves, and this is what Margaret Sanger herself says: the most miserable thing, I mean, sorry, the most merciful thing that a family like this can do is to is uh, with one of their infants is to kill it. That's what she mm -hmm. said. That now, some of they say now, oh, that's hyperbole. And actually, Margaret Sanger was very careful about not promoting abortion, only only uh, uh, contraception, but because um, uh, because of the sensitivity of the subject at the time, it's it's really absurd to, to claim that Margaret Sanger actually did not support abortion. She certainly did, and all her arguments led to it. In fact, of course, Planned Parenthood comes okay. along, and well, lo and behold, and with no surprise whatsoever, becomes a leading abortionist in America because they are acting on her principles. So yeah. the population control movement, many of the eugenicists, the, much of the eugenicist movement, because of the bad name that eugenics got with Nazi Germany, they started changing their uh, the name of like eugenics quarterly becomes like social biology quarterly and stuff. And many of these people who are in the eugenics movement switch over to now the population control movement. And the idea is that um, we're heading for a complete disaster. The human humanity is heading for uh, an apocalypse if we do not um, uh, uh, achieve what they call zero population growth. The people behind the zero population growth movement were actually for the most part uh, 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 of uh, uh, a mix of eugenicists and uh, outright complete racists, you know. So, the, so, so um, uh, the the guy who wrote the famous book on this, um, I think it's called the Population Bomb, winds up uh, founding a major um, uh, 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 the, the I forget fair. It's a um, uh, it's an anti-immigration movement today. The guy who um, uh, the guy who founded Narrow uh, National Association of um, Reproductive. I don't know. They've they're, they're, they've changed what that acronym stands several times, but it's the number two after um, National Organization for Women. Narrow is a, a critically um, a massive, massive organization. This guy, the founder, the, the co-founder, he's one of the co-founders, mm -hmm. left there and went on to uh, went on to, to to join a very virulent anti-immigration organization and went on to write papers about how um, how horrible uh, um, these all these dirty uh, foreigners and stuff uh, mm -hmm. were doing what they were doing to America. So the population control movement. Nixon uh, starts a popular uh, uh, because of the pressure in the public. This is just in the public uh, 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 eye at the moment. Imagination, this this fear of this because of the propaganda that these people are doing, and that's how social movements work. They begin to push and push and push, and so suddenly everyone's talking about it. So Nixon uh, starts a, um, a population control movement, which is I mean a commission, which is headed by Nelson Rockefeller. It's a Republican-led commission. No. Um, but it, uh, uh, but it's not the like the religious right type uh, Republicans. It's a different faction in the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. So they come up with a uh, they come up with a set of recommendations. Says if we're going to uh, to avert this population apocalypse, we're going to need to implement these certain recommendations. And one of them is um, abortion must be uh, legalized. The uh, we recommend. Uh, adopting the laws in states like California and New York, which have and, and, and Connecticut, which have, have heavily liberalized their abortion laws, so that we can help get this population um, under control. You know, right, so right. so so the question is, so not conspiracy is, theories, conspiracy fact, right? No, no, this is all this is all this is all very well. Done. So 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 the question is um, now after Roe v. Wade, 
all these other um, motivating factors. Yeah. You know, I saw someone say, oh, I don't care about Margaret Sanger being a eugenicist. Um, that's not that's not what abortion policy is about today. Mm -hmm. yeah, OK, but like I said, um, uh, uh, it's very important to know what are the motivating um, uh, 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 values and, and laws and so on and so on that are um, that are behind these things, because you're going to buy their by its nature, because Allah does not put higher in a law. Um, in in in, um, in 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 things like that, even if they happen to coincide with outlying scholars in some way in their outcomes, overall it's it's actually um, a very evil. And I'm not going to go into it right now, but Roe v. Wade and Griswold become used as the um, uh, as the uh, 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 let's say the basis for a whole slew of very very um, bad. Um, uh, 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 Supreme Court decisions, um, which are, were to come many years later, including Obergefell allowing the um, uh, uh, marriage of um, same-sex marriage. Okay, so right. it's, it's pretty clear that we could be, be going for like three or four hours and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All this, but, yeah. but I wanted to give the audience uh, yes, an opportunity yes, as please. well to, um, yeah. to, uh, to, to get some of their questions across. And um, yeah. Yeah, but mashallah, Allah bless you, and uh, hopefully uh, the uh, article will be out very soon. Um, we can benefit mashallah. for it as well, right? But um, um, I'm going to start here. So um, Abdul Rahman says, uh, can you address the claim that Muslims should not support foreclosing abortion rights in order to maintain the full range of fifth opinions on abortion and doing otherwise to destroying deen, which take precedence over saving life. I think we actually addressed this already, right? Yes, we talked about this before. Yeah, you know, we, we talked the, about the, it. Yeah, right, I, right. I just want to, I, I want to mention, just, just let's, let's look at, for example, okay. Uh, uh -huh. um, there, again, I, I just want to reiterate, I don't know, and so like, like, someone please uh, inform me. I mean, I, I, I but I don't know of any um, uh, principle in um, uh, 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 the, the, in the Sharia, but also, also moreover, like the principles of um, Sultan, you know, of, of authorities and so on. Absolutely. That the the the, 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 the Sultan and so on. That there that that um, the um, Sultan has to permit um uh, uh, like it's lo like let's like 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 this is a little bit more nuanced than what we were talking about that the, 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 the government has to allow a sort of legal pluralism where the government's policies that they um implement of course we know that uh historically um the judicial system is was somewhat you know it's like a sort of like separation of powers from the um you know from the uh uh in, in, in from the central authorities you know in many extent like yeah the government would appoint qadis and so on but the qadis um, had a measure of uh, uh, of independence and so on, but that being said, like the the there, there's still siasa, there's siasa which right. uh, you know the the ruler is allowed to um, to prefer certain um, uh, uh, certain views for the purpose of the good that they see. So yes, let's just right. take let's just take for example, I mean let's just take the Taliban. Okay, I'm not a supporter of the Taliban. This has absolutely nothing to do with whether I like the Taliban. I'm using the example because it is. They are uh, sort of sort of universally recognized as being like the most like you know uh, far out like extreme version of, of whether or not this is to what extent is accurate or not. But they pass a law that says all the women have to wear niqab. Let's just say they they implement a law. I don't actually know what what law they've implemented, but let's just say that they have such. I know they reportedly had such a law in the past. Let's say they implement that law. Are you going to say? Are we going to say now that this is um, bad? Because it does not allow for the range of those who said that the, the, the face is not um, uh, part of the aura of the woman. Um, or if they pass a law that says the feet have to be covered, you know, uh, uh, many Hanafis don't or require the feet to be covered. Many, many. So, so, so let's say someone pa pass a law that says that the, uh, the, uh, the uh, um, uh, showing the feet is, is not harm. Let's let's avoid the whole question of uh, uh, you know uh, you know oh hijab is my right or or if to do it or not to. That's not what we're talking. About. We're talking about an, uh, you know uh, you know this. So so let's uh, um, you know. Uh, we're talking. We're, we're, I'm talking right now to people who ignore. I'm not talking to those who. Um, and I'll respectfully uh, say that this argument is not for you if you don't believe the government has any uh, ability to um, uh, to regulate what people wear or not. That, if that's your, if that's someone's position, obviously then you're not going to agree with this entire line of argument. And let's let's bracket that off and we'll we'll discuss it. I'm talking now to people who do recognize that government has um, a role. Now, in that case. Um, uh, no, you're, you're you're not you're not uh, you're not somehow destroying the dean because you're because you're um, you're not accommodating. You're not saying okay, women uh, women who uh, are of the madhab that that the um, that the, the face is not the outer um, um, uh, that uh, that the law does not accommodate people who have. So what are you going to do? You're going to carry a card around that says, oh, wait a minute, I'm uh, 
I don't know, whatever. I, I follow something other than than that opinion, which, by the way, is shared by you know many, many uh, of the Madahab. So at that point, um, you're not um, you're not destroying the deen. It's just that the ruler has decided that it yeah. is in the the public interest yeah. um, that uh, that this be the law. Likewise, if if you you know if if uh, anyway, there 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 are many things that there are differences of opinion on. That if the that if if, if the um, uh, yeah, you can you, you, you can think about it even terms of like you know speed limits and things like that. Okay, speed it's limits, 75, 75 miles per hour. Cigarettes. We, we mentioned cigarettes. Yeah, we mentioned, of, yeah. Yeah, we, yes. mentioned, we mentioned we mentioned age of uh, age of marriage and so on. And those are things like a ruler could. Uh, I don't know any fets. I don't know the fets was on this, but perhaps a ruler could say, "Hey, look, because of the conditions in our society in this situation, and and having having no age limit is resulting in a lot of serious abuses that we can't control in any other way other than to say that we're going to have to regulate." Um, this because it's it's leading to a, a lot of harms. You're not going to find the people who are complaining about this also saying, anyway, regardless of whether people are consistent or not. That's besides right. The, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we we covered you know that. Yeah, I think, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty it should should be clear. Hopefully by this month. But okay. I mean, this was I want this is a re relationship to um, the, the question about uh, yeah. the reasons yeah. why a, a woman could could achieve a, a, a an abortion you know so yeah. so um so so we get there there's there and there there are those opinions there's an opinion that talked about how you know you know that that a woman's you know her mental health or her uh, uh, physical health being damaged through the pregnancy or something like that uh, being good reason or sufficient reason for an abortion prior to of course 120 days and you do have these different opinions but again we i think it's important for us as muslims to to stop sort of harping on permissible and not permissible right, right. that's not the only criteria because you something can be permissible and you do it you know but it still can damage someone's life right you know so yeah. let, let, let's 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 it, it, yes very point let's let's mention a couple points here first of all as you said we don't want to get bogged down in stuff like that not that it's not an important question but um but like it is a question but let's say like there are secondary questions that are extremely important but that like other things have to get like settled first before we start you know but but let's look just let's ask uh, look at this real quick it it is critical to understand that there is also a mental health component to aborting a child Yes. And, and 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 listen. I'm not sitting here talking about a personal um, my personal life. I'm talking abstractly. But I can uh, but I can tell you that I know um, people personally. You know, um, and I won't get into who. I know people very pers personally who are who um, have suffer from a lot of depression from um, fr and guilt and so on from um, from that. And, uh, abortion. You know, yeah, from from abortion. So so it, so now. That being said, there are also people who have like you know uh, what do you call it um, you know postnatal um, uh, depression and uh, and and they're afflicted by those things, you know. And so these are things that that what were the, the you know the, the the what we really have to think about is how can these things be addressed in a way other than like terminating life, you know? Because yeah. we didn't actually we didn't actually get into it, but there are many many other things uh, um, uh, 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 values Islamic values deeply rooted in Islam that that apply that 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 um, motivated the ulama's um, rulings and opinions on preventing abortion, even prior or restricting in some way, either completely or to, or, or to some degree prior to 120 days. So all of those things have to be taken into account to see what can be done to preserve those um, and be faithful to those values of Islam and, and the ethics of Islam at the same time avoiding these harms that are real harms that people are mentioning you know what i'm saying those are things that need to be real but but this is the conversation we have to have this is the kind of um uh, um uh, the, uh these are kind of the considerations that we need to weigh not simply just uh uh, uh saying oh you're destroying the dean and but no mm -hmm. come on let's let's have a, like a mature adult co uh, yeah. conversation mm -hmm. and and let's not allow, let's not have certain people going out and saying i speak for the muslims and this is this is what now, hold on. Let's let's have a community conversation, and and, and Jazakallah, that's what this is uh, yeah. part of. And I really hope, I really hope that those who are out there um, making statements and so on will. Um, uh, I'm not saying you don't have a right to make a statement. I'm making a statement. You're making a statement. But let's let's um, let's do this in a way that is uh, a shorter uh, process. You know what I mean? That, that right. with with the aim of uh, uh, arriving at the truth. Not, not, you know, not the aim of I'm right and those people. You know. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was no. I'm, it's okay. The that, that was that was that was beneficial. Yeah. I think that uh, there's one particular issue I wanted to address, and it came up in a couple of comments. I don't want to repost the person's comment, but yeah. Um, this is with respect to an early conversation we we're having about um, the opinion that 
you know, or the general opinion saying that, okay, rape itself is not an excuse uh, to get an abortion, right? You know, and so like if one of the commenters has stated that, okay, well now here's to the area where, okay, now men probably wouldn't, they really wouldn't understand because we're not women, then we wouldn't be, you know, so you have to, you know, a woman having to carry the, the rapist child and give birth to it and anything was a big problem. You know? And so, so, and I totally empathize with that, you know, and I think, yeah. it, I think it's important to understand that this particular discussion is not um, about saying first and foremost that that we should completely ignore the opinions exactly. that allow for abortion in right. cases. This is not what this is about, right? Exactly. This is about exactly. trying to properly understand what are the ph philosophical and the moral underpinning of this abortion movement, right? Right. Uh, and how it 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 undermines humanity. It undermines. Um, um, life, right, and 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 that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wants the human being to live and to flourish and to grow, right? You know, to expand the number of, of people on the planet as opposed to doing the opposite, right? Exactly. And so, so, so naturally, if if a woman were to come to me as a as a counselor, right, as a man yeah. trying to counsel her, right, right, I'm not going to say to a sister, you know, okay, I'll say, hey, well, you know, that's tough luck. Right, you know, yeah. <laughs> if you got raped, you know, you no, know, that's not the way you deal with that. You know, that this is going to take a certain type of emotional intelligence, right? You know, and but ultimately leaving that decision up to that that particular woman, right? You know, but but this is about okay, understanding uh, what our own limits are, right? You know, do we have the right as people to take a life, right? Because regardless of what you say, okay, okay, or how it happened, right? There's a life growing inside of that woman. Right. And having clarity, we need to have clarity on whether or not Islam allows for you to take that life or to 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 deny that child, which has been placed on a trajectory into this realm. Right. Right. In that woman's womb, that whether or not Islam allows for you to take that life. And if you do take life, it's a sinful. Will Allah punish you for it? Et cetera. Right. And that's really the big question. Right. You know, because because many people, because, again, abortion is not the only option either. Right. You know, exactly. yes, you, have to, you know, of course, it's uncomfortable. It's definitely a major inconvenience that she'd have to carry that child to term. Right. Right. But once she gives birth to it, she may change the way she feels about it. Or right. if she happens all the time, about it, she can give it up for an adoption, right? You know, at exactly. least she won't exactly. murdering something, right? Yeah, some someone, right? Yeah, that's really yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, of course, we live in a time of of, of a nuclear family, which is, um, you know, very truncated and and uh, harmful. And this is, by the way, due to you know, the, 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 you know, the sort of effects of heartless capitalism with its detached from virtue and the detached from mercy. And we have a, you know, and, and, and the economic situation, situation breakdown of the family. We have a situation where it is very difficult, uh, no question for a woman to have, you know, um, uh, to raise a child, especially in, in, in the situations that many people are in. Okay. But let's, um, I mean, I just want to, I want to give an example. There was, there was a, there was a case and I'm going to um, discuss this in my paper. There was a case that uh, came out in 19, and I, I think I've told you about this, uh, Dr. Abdel. Um, mm -hmm. There's a case that came out. At, um, um, actually, the, the case arose before Roe v. Wade, and then it continued until after Roe v. Wade, okay? The, the facts of the case. The facts of the case are this. There was a woman who um, got pregnant. She wanted to, um, she wanted to um, go to college, and she thought that having a baby would, uh, would prevent that. So she went to an abortionist. He injected her with, uh, she was tw uh, 25 weeks. She went to an abortionist. He injected her with, um, which, by the way, is after insulment, and injected her with um, uh, uh, an abortifacient in her, in, her, in her womb, and the womb expelled the child. The child lived uh, after he came out. They put uh, in the in the, uh, the, uh, the child was this happened in the hospitals that they uh, put the child on life support. The child lived for something like um, I don't know, like like two, uh, three, four weeks or something, you know, and then finally died. And it was on life support, but it finally died. It was in the NICU. Maybe today they would have been able to save it. <clears throat> so the prosecutor charged this, um, uh, learned about this, charged about the charged the abortionist um, under the existing abortion law at the at the time, you know, uh, um, in South Carolina. And um, so then Roe v. Wade comes out, and um, and they still continue with the prosecution. So the um, the lawyer for the abortionist. 
um, uh, files a motion in federal court to have the state case dismissed against him as being unconstitutional under Roe v. Wade. And so the um, um, uh, what what the state what the what the federal court said was because this child died um, uh, uh, on life support, that means it was not able to survive outside the womb. That means that the child that the that the child was not viable. The pregnancy was not viable. Which means that under Roe and under the 14th Amendment, this child was never alive. This child was never alive. This mm -hmm. is a child with a soul who is lying in a NICU, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an in a ICU, struggling for its life, breathing, crying, and it dies. And under the law, under Roe v. Wade, this child was never alive. This child... This child, there, there is no consequence. M moreover, there can be no law that would in any way regulate the, the killing of this child. This is not Islam. This is evil. This is evil in its root. And the mere fact that it might have corresponded in some way with some outlying scholars' views in its outcome in no way, in no way justifies any Muslim to support this evil law, this evil, mm -hmm. this evil case. Mm -hmm. Right, inshallah. Um, it's a bit, we'll take a couple more, inshallah. Let me see. Uh, I can. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, and I have to. I have to wrap up at four. So. Right, right, yes. right inshallah. Yes. yes. So, okay. a couple more, a couple more. so here, um, um, I would ask, uh, how did that simple woman ended up, ended up in? Uh... No, I'm sorry. Okay, that wasn't what I was looking for. I'm sorry. Well, I'll come back. I'll come back to that maybe later. So, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Because it says, so, yes. so he says, it says, will your article include the history of the argument for abortion that you had mentioned here? Yes, inshallah. Well, it will that answer easy, easy answer to that is that, and then uh, is yes, and then I want to answer that other one, and then we have to end. In Buck right. v. Bell, in in Buck v. Bell, that case that you're talking about, that mm -hmm. that um, the the simple-minded woman who 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 became pregnant. Mm -hmm. She uh, she became pregnant through a, a man that she fell in love with and 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 loved and so on. Her child, which was the cause of this of this um, uh, uh, of the steriliz of this court ordered sterilization, state or government ordered sterilization, the this child went on to become actually a a, 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 a brilliant student, went to college, went on and and uh, Oliver Wendell Holmes said three generations of imbeciles are enough. And he didn't realize that in the fourth generation this, that this woman would go. Not to say that this child's life is worth anything more because he, she went to college than a child who would have just been like a simple washerwoman. You know, that's not what I'm that, and And moreover, it's actually it's actually not relevant. It's actually not relevant because the principle that that law stands for is what's important. The principle of that law is that you can be, the state can sterilize you if it deems that it has a good reason to sterilize you. For example, being an imbecile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, I, I have so, to, so this is the last one. So this last one. So the as um. So he said, do, do you feel that a lot of scholars speaking on, on abortion in, a, in an academic hypothetical fix since living in a Muslim majority society are out of touch as to the extent of the abortion industry, including the sale of baby organs for research, uh, and put out of touch with the horrors of abortion as practiced in the U.S. And then yeah. someone added, you know, and also uh, yeah. using it for cosmetics. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, this is a great point. I mean, it's 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 really important for. Uh, and this, by the way, they say with fatwas, garbage in, garbage out. You know what I mean? So, so if someone is is acting on the basis of um, incomplete information or mis, uh, misapprehension, then they're human beings, and they're the they're, they're applying a, a broad general principle to their um, to the best of their ability to specific uh, case uh, uh, situations. And if they don't have complete information in the specific situation, then they're gonna they're gonna make a mistake mistake in their fatwa. Look at um, Ibn Abbas when the man came to him and said, "Our um, uh, will the uh, um, will the murder uh, uh, is is repentance accepted from the murder?" And Ibn Abbas said, "No." And uh, mm -hmm. so the man went on. And then uh, his companion said to to him, um, "Why did you say no when the uh, Allah said <laughs> basically that repentance is accepted, you know, from from, from everyone?" You know, and he says, um, and he said, uh, he said because I uh, I'm paraphrasing. I looked at that man and I saw murder in his eyes. So in other words, if he had told him that, yeah, repentance is accepted, then he would have gone off and right. murdered someone. Right. Yeah. yeah, but he had he had insight and he had information that, that uh, this Sahaba didn't know. And by the way, he didn't lie to him. 
He didn't lie to him because the mm -hmm. one who intends to commit a sin and then make toba later, his his toba is not uh, sincere, right. because you know, so because he's playing games, you know what I mean. So insincere toba is not accepted. So he uh, Ibn Abbas didn't lie. He just gave him the proper fatwa for the proper situation. Right. And right. taghira al taghira al hakam. You know, the change of the uh, era changes the. So it's very important to have proper input. Okay, that's all I, I, I can do. All right, do right. Well, I think we appreciate it. Uh, appreciate okay. everyone tuning in today. Appreciate uh, Seth Ismail for um, imparting um, great knowledge to us today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you. Uh, looking forward to more opportunities like this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he spare our ummah from chaos, from confusion, mm -hmm. from disunity, uh, and mm -hmm. maybe have uh, many more uh, healthy uh, conversations like this one with uh, those who agree with us and those who disagree with us, inshallah. Absolutely. But uh, please do um, support Lampo, the Lampo Education Initiative. Um, um, we, of course, uh, you know, um, always appreciate uh, your your support. And uh, please do put, the, you know, get the word out about our efforts and please donate, uh, inshallah, if you can. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.